Can you believe that? I'm gonna hold back. Our um, I can't believe this. our guy that has been working on all the different launches around the world. Just this morning, he's like. Direct TV just confirmed. That's the point. What a coincidence, right? Right. Today. Today. Of all the days. But do, do you both, I mean, Marcus, God bless you. Oh. And yes, then yes. you continuing with this vision, you have no idea how big this is for the community. Wow. I, I, know, you, I know you think you know. I'm a, I'm a bit overwhelmed. No yeah. joke. I'm, I'm getting emotional here. This is, I've been praying for this. And we've been praying and asking and here we have it. And then DirecTV today, thank you. Thank you. And streaming Thank you, as Daystar. Well. And streaming. No, again, this is a dream and a petition mm -hmm. in full, unbridled fulfillment. Glory yeah. be to God. Thank you. Yeah. Look what the Lord has done. Esto es algo grandísimo. <laughs> this is something so massive. Amen. The fastest growing demographic in America, but the one leading revival around the world, the Latino community from yeah. Argentina all the way through, hit Spain, let's do this. Yes. Yeah. Wow. The yeah. number one Latino faith network on planet Earth. Here we go. Yes. Hey, Star, yes. Praise Espanol. you, God. Yeah. Praise God. Well, Pastor <laughs> Sammy, it wouldn't have happened without you because you're our lead ambassador. And it's not as if you have any time on your hands because you oversee 44,000 churches in the NHCLC. You're the leading communicator for the Hispanic community. You service and advise both sides of the aisle in Congress um, and in the Senate here. And also, you know, past presidents from President Bush, President Obama, President Trump. I mean, you are such a valuable asset to the kingdom That's of God. That's quite an introduction, by the way, Josh. Uh, that I'm, was... <laughs> I am hiring as my public relations. <laughs> Joshua, you're right. Well, it's true. It's all true. You know, God, this is all by the grace of God. That's not hype. It's 1 Corinthians 15, 10. We yes. know it's God ordained since I was a kid. God ordained this. And, and it's been a journey. But I'm excited about Christ being exalted and just millions of people coming to him as Lord and Savior. We talked about that Fox News interview. God's up to something. Yes. yes. All right, yes. all right. So remember that whole thing I shared on Fox News? Mm -hmm. Right. We, we have to add on Jesus Revolution. And by the way, they star Espanol. Yeah. We have to add that caveat on. Like, yeah. you, you think this is a coincidence? Yeah. Do you really think out of every, any day of the year, it happens today? God is up to something. The Spirit of God is moving. We are experiencing an awakening, a move of God. We're about to see more people get saved than ever before in human history. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. I really do believe that. And, you know, your book, Your, your Mess, God's Miracle, I mean, I really am seeing this happening so much in the body of Christ where God has taken things that we've gone through personally and turned them around and used it to reach people with the gospel in a powerful way. And that's really what he, he wants to do. He wants to continue to do that. It, it's converting a mess into a miracle. It stems from John chapter nine. Jesus finds a blind man who was born blind and he get, engages in a very unorthodox uh, methodology. I mean, who does this? He takes his spit, a spit. It may have been allergy season. We don't know, <laughs> but he takes his spit. He combines it with the dirt. Who does that, right? right. He makes a mud ball. Then he spreads the mess. John chapter 9, it says, and he spread it, mm. spread it. He spread. Jesus made a mess. Behind that mess was his DNA. Wow. He literally took his DNA. That's not like metaphorical. Scientifically speaking, he took his DNA. He placed it upon the eyes of a man who was born blind. In essence, with your DNA, you're a victim. With my DNA, you're more than a conqueror. Yeah. With your DNA, you will live in perpetuity, traumatized. you walk with your trauma. With my DNA, that trauma becomes a testimony. Wow. That drama becomes destiny. That fear converts to faith. That's the power of an infusion of the glory and the grace of Jesus Christ. Your mess. That's why I'm on this program today on the launch of Daystar Espanol on Direct TV and around the world. Every family mess, your home mess, your family mess, your financial mess, your relational mess, your health mess, God has the power to convert your mess into a miracle. You know, one of the things you talk about in the book that really stood out to our producers when they were looking at it is um, that statement, your joy is coming. There's a song that, if you heard it, there'll be joy in the morning. I mean, and really that is happening where God is taking all of that junk and crap that you've gone through yeah. and he's giving you joy in the morning. And you talk about Joy instead of riots, revival. Instead of lockdowns, open heavens. Instead of strife, unity. Instead of hatred, love. Talk about that. It's a season of instead of. 
the power of this infusion of God's DNA. And he says, listen, I'm about to replace it. Hmm. You, what you were born with, you were born blind. It wasn't your fault. You were born blind. However, even if it's self-inflicted messes, because sometimes we make our own messes, right? That's right. right. That's so right. it's not just a mess someone else places on us or a pre, you know, disposition, some genetic predisposition. Yeah. It's our own created mess. That's true. God says, I don't really care how the mess got there. Whether it's your own doing, someone else did it to you. I am the one, I am the master of making a miracle out of the mess. Instead of riots, revival. Instead of just storming the Capitol, we're about to storm the gates of hell in the name of Jesus. It's a season of instead of. God is the God of the impossible. In every single circumstance from Genesis to Revelation, he converts a mess into a miracle. We're living that right now. Yeah. You know, everyone's written off our current political cultural landscape, America. And America. And, and, oh, we're done. We're yeah. written off. We're like done. We're done, right? right? And then God, Asbury Revival. So it's Pew Research Gallup the most non-Christian generation in American history. That was a study outcome, right? All right. And then God says, really, say it again. The most non-Christian generation, 18 to 25-year-olds, say it again. Really, let me visit Asbury. The yeah. same demographic that you have deemed the most non-Christian, let me show you my glory. Yeah. So I love that. Go ahead. Show God a mess. Show God a mess, and I will show you God's miracle. That is so cool. So I love that Bible story, Jesus creating the mess. What's something in your life that you've physically seen God turn a mess into? Oh, he's converted. So many, my, my, from my circumstance with my daughter who almost passed away to circumstances when I was advising presidents in different, different, different areas, um, particularly in one particular area where uh, we had some movie deals and contracts laid out. And uh, because of my commitment to lifting up the name of Jesus publicly, uh, I basically lost what I had. But then God said, I'm going to make this miracle out of the mess. And then he opened up doors for us to do major projects beyond what I originally signed on to. And then that's how Breakthrough the movie came to be and other movie deals. So I've seen that on multiple occasions. Here's the thing about the mess. So this man was born blind. And Jesus opened up his eyes to see what he never saw before. Some of us are so obsessed with God restoring our past. And God looks at us and says, listen, I'm not here to renovate your past. I'm here to release your future. Wow. Oh, you should say that again. I'm not here to renovate your past. You're obsessed with me renovating your past. I'm not here to renovate your past. I'm here to release your future. Yeah. That's so good. And that, that's a word for somebody watching right now. You've just been so concerned about it looking back. Yes that you haven't opened your eyes to see forward what God is doing in this time, in this season. And uh, I tell you what, I appreciate what you said about America and, and even the world. I do believe God is up to something really supernatural and we are seeing it already take place. Are you seeing the difference in even some of the churches you're going to? Pre-COVID numbers. So before there was a lid, about 30% of parishioners, attendees were going back to church. Whether they're online or not, it becomes an ambiguous spaghetti on the wall analysis because we don't know. Uh, difficult to do analytics and data mining on that. All of a sudden, in the past 45 days, I even talked to Russell Evans about Australian panic shakers. It's popping. Churches at loss are now gaining, and some have already exceeded pre-COVID numbers. Mm -hmm. Across a country and across the world, there's hunger. Wherever you have prayer and hunger, you will have revival. Yeah. Prayer plus hunger. For hunger for what? For righteousness. You will have revival. So people are hungry for a move of God. God, do it again. And we're about to see this even at greater levels. Watch God. Watch God show up. Yeah, so what the enemy meant for evil, God is already turning around for good and we're seeing that. He's flipping the script He's, as we speak. He's flipping it. He's flipping it. So I know that um, your heart is so strong for the Latino, Hispanic, Espanol, I don't even know, never know the word, right word to say. Just don't say Latinx, everything but. But that, You're good. yeah, okay. Don't cross but out the Pedro. Espanol, for all of our wonderful Hispanic viewers and for those around the world, but why do you think God is really up to something, especially in that community? It's, I would argue the Latino, Hispanic community are modern day Samaritans. We're modern day Samaritans and through the migratory process, through the immigrant experience, and we want people to come to America legally, but immigrants are a blessing indeed. And the Latino community, whether they're Latin America, here in America, they carry faith. There's a faith ethos 
they, they love God. And family. They love family. Yes. And they believe in this ethic called hard work. Terrible values in America. Let's put this again. Let's digress here. God, family, and hard work. These values are antithetical to our current American political, cultural, social landscape. No, I'm, I'm being facetious and a bit sarcastic, but it's, it's a community that will reinvigorate mm -hmm. the exceptional nature of what we call the American experience. I, I, listen, the next, we had the, the next great names, Moody and Spurgeon and Finney and so forth and, and Graham and, and Lamb, well, we're about to see Sanchez y Miranda and Rivera and others that will lead an awakening in America. I truly believe that. This community is destined. There's an anointing, not in some sort of messianic complex, but there's an anointing on the Latino community yeah. to just lead revival around the world. A bunch of revivalists yeah. and that have these values. You know, um, for me personally, I know here at Daystar, the Lord has really put on my heart to give people an opportunity to receive Jesus every, every time we're on the air. I love it. I love that. And so... I, I know you're going to preach, so at some point I want you to get make sure you give people an opportunity to get saved because there's some people watching right now and you really don't know if you're ready to meet the Lord. And this is harvest time, and the reason why harvest time is happening is because Jesus is coming back. People have kind of grown weary of hearing that message, we, you know, but I'm just telling you, there is an urgency like I've never felt before. Do you sense that? I agree with that. This is the end time harvest, without a doubt. He's coming back. And there's one more shot to get this right. Let's get everybody in. Let's do this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Pastor Sammy, you're not afraid to preach the unadulterated Word of God. You don't water it down. Um, in these last days that we're living in, why is it important to confront false beliefs? Because you talk we, about that in your book. Well, because we hear, we hear the outline from 2 Timothy chapter 3, the exhaustive Paul to Timothy outline of in the last days. People will become lovers of themselves, narcissism. They will deviate from sound teaching. Uh, and then we have Matthew 24. W but there's a last day promise. In the last days, God said, uh, not I might, not I may, but I hope to, <laughs> not if things line up. He said, I will, will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So it is important that we confront heretical teaching, false doctrines, biblical deviancy. Our number one issue in America and around the world is theological promiscuity. People have deviated from the word of God. But for such a time as this, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Preach the word in and out of season. I'm fully committed to never sacrificing the truth of the gospel of Jesus. Your mess is about to become God's miracle. I will repeat that. Let me have your undivided attention. Your mess is about to become God's miracle. Pastor Sam, but it's messy. Your family mess, your home mess, your relational mess, whatever it may be, your mess is about to become God's miracle. Why? Because the process is temporary, but the promise is permanent. Here's the word of the Lord. Open your eyes to the new. Let's make it legal. John chapter nine, verse one through seven. As Jesus was walking, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Let's go to the verse number six. He spit on the ground, and that's messy. That's messy. That's very unorthodox, by the way. Not highly recommended if you're studying to be a pastor or a preacher. He made mud with the saliva. That's even more messy. And he spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He spread the mess. Jesus spread the mess. And then he had the audacity to tell this man who is now engaging, this is going to be a bad joke, but it's worth repeating, a double blind study. He told them, go wash yourself in the pool. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. What a method. I want to speak to you on that subject matter. Your mess, God's miracle, messy miracles. Open your eyes to the new. Now, let me confess something. I'm a bit OCD. I am. My wife would actually attest to that. My mind works in a very linear, sequential manner. For all the Trekkies out there, I may preach like Captain Kirk, but I process like Spock. <laughs> so I find it to be a bit challenging to reconcile what I perceive as chaos with order. In other words, how can a miracle emerge out of a mess? This biblical narrative speaks to me because, ladies and gentlemen, I have lived it. Let me permit me to begin by encouraging you to do the following. Number one, open your eyes to what you have never seen before. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from what? From birth. 
This man was not losing his sight. This man did not lose his sight. He never had it in the first place. He was born blind. This circumstance facilitates the environment for Christ to reveal a functional and ontological extension of the creative nature of providence. In other words, with the woman that had the issue of blood, he gave her back her health. With the invalid man at Bethesda, he gave him back his walk. With Lazarus, he gave him back his life. But with this man in John chapter 9, Jesus did not give him something he lost. Jesus gave him something he never had in the first place. Ooh, there's a difference between God restoring something you had and God giving you something you never had in the first place. Our God is not only the God that restores. Our God is the God that gives us what we never had before. Our Lord is the Lord of the new thing. Let me repeat that. Our Lord is the Lord of the new thing. Our God is the Lord of the new thing. Isaiah 43, 19, behold, I do a new thing. Do you not see it? Some of us focus our time, allocate our time in attempting, watch this, to get back what we lost when we should be asking God to give us what we never had in the first place. Let me repeat what I just shared. God is not interested in renovating your past. And I will double down on this. This is a word for someone right now. God is not interested in renovating your past. God is not interested in renovating your past. He is interested in releasing your future. Hence the question we have to ask ourselves in our families, in our faith, in our generation, in our nation, are we ready to see what we have never seen before? We cannot deny that in the past three years, in America and around the world, negatively speaking, we have seen what we have never seen before. We saw the effects of a global pandemic that killed millions. We saw the ruins of racial and social unrest, destroying properties, families, dividing communities, and fragmenting the church. We saw the damage of political discord, where the donkey and the elephant temporarily succeeded in dividing what belongs to the lamb. We witnessed and continue to bear witness to a cancel woke culture that insists in silencing everyone and everything that refuses to toe the line of a morally relativistic ideological worldview that runs counter to the word and the spirit of God. We saw and continue to see a generation targeted by the architects of darkness with the message that there is no such thing as truth, gender, holiness, and personal responsibility. Can I take a break right now on Daystar and just speak to every principality and power of darkness coming after our children and our children's children? And in the name of Jesus, here's the word. Get your hands off our children. Get your hands off off our children in the name of Jesus. Hey, in the past three years, we saw the mess. We see the mess. Turn on CNN, NBC, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, and of course, in today's context, Telemundo y Univision, and you will see the mess. But what if I tell you that in your family, in your faith, in your generation, even in our nation, we are about to see the mess become a miracle. I will repeat that. We are about to see the mess become a miracle. Can we begin right now, this season, declaring the mess is about to become a miracle? The mess is about to become a miracle. The mess is about to become a miracle. Just like the blind man in John chapter 9 saw what he never saw before. I need you to get ready to see what you have never seen before. In all aspects of your life, in your children and your children's children, you need to get ready to see what we have never seen before. The mess is about to become a miracle. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? John eleven forty. But as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. First Corinthians two nine. In Jesus' name, we are about to see what we have never seen before. We are about to see more people come to Jesus than ever before in human history. We are about to see our prodigal sons and daughters come back home. Hey, turn on your porch light. Your prodigal sons and daughters are running back home. 
We are about to see Christ-centered, Bible-based, spirit-empowered, societal architects and cultural reformers rise up and literally change our world. We are about to see once again light overcome darkness, love defeat hate, and truth silence the lies. We are about to see the glory of God fill the earth. But indeed, as I live, all the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. Numbers 14, 21. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2, 14. I want to make this clear. I don't think, I don't hope, I don't wish, and I don't feel. I know that God's about to show up. And you may ask, how can you be so certain? Because of Luke chapter 1, verse 37. The word of God never fails. Because of Hebrews 10, 23, God can be trusted to keep his promise. Now, you may argue that I am in denial of the fact that we're living in the last days. Hey, Pastor Sam, that, that's just wishful thinking, sunshine. You're preaching this optimistic message of revival and awakening. You were on Fox News declaring a revival. And listen, it, we're just not lining up and signing up to the idea because we're living in the last days. Things are going to get darker. Hey, I'm fully cognizant of the very exhaustive list that Paul shared with Timothy in 2 Timothy 3 regarding the last days. I am aware of the gospel of Matthew 24 as it pertains to the last days. I know we're living in the last days. In the last days, men and women will become lovers of themselves. We call that narcissism and half the accounts on Instagram. In the last days, men and women will deviate from their natural desires. We call that the entire state of California. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke, but it's actually true. But there is a last day promise that prompted me to get on a plane and be here today on Daystar, on the launch of Daystar Espanol everywhere. He promised, he promised in Job 2.28, God did. This is what he promised. It, the promise is so big. It's repeated in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Are you ready? In the last days. This is it. Hold on to this. In the last days. God never said, I may, I might, I probably will, if things line up. No, he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. <laughs> what does this mean for you and your family, your home, your circumstance, your generation? The next thing to fill America and Latin America and the nations, the next thing to fill the nations will not be COVID 20, 21, or 22. The next thing to fill the earth will be the glory of the risen Christ Jesus. Your family mess is about to become God's miracle. Your mental mess is about to become God's miracle. Your financial mess is about to become God's miracle. Your health mess is about to become God's miracle. Your generational mess is about to become God's miracle. America's mess is about to become God's miracle. What does this mean? It means this. Instead of riots, revival. Instead of lockdowns, open heavens. Instead of strife, unity. Instead of hatred, love. Instead of relativism, truth. Instead of destroying properties, building altars. Instead of confrontations, conversations. Instead of political affiliation, prophetic designation. Instead of storming the capital, storming the gates of hell. And instead of many under fear, get ready to see one nation under God. <laughs> Raise your right hand at home right there where you're at. Raise your, raise your right hand, repeat after me. If you believe the mess is about to become a miracle, raise your hand, repeat after me. I'm about to see what I've never seen before. In my family, in my faith, in my finances, in my relationships, in my church, in my community, in my thinking, in my actions, in my words, in my health, in my surroundings, in my nation, in my generation, I'm about to see what I've never seen before. God's miracle. If you believe it, praise like you believe it. Worship like you believe it. Rejoice like you believe it. Declare it like you believe it. How about this? Live like you believe it. Because your mess is about to become God's miracle. I want to pray with you right now. If you've never, ever, ever received the one who converts 
the mess into a miracle. If you have never, ever received the vicarious, atoning, finished work of Jesus, this is your day. You may say, my life is so messy, preacher man. This day was created for you to receive, to embrace the reality that Christ will make a miracle out of your mess. He already did. 2,000 years ago, by the shedding of the blood of Christ, and subsequently through his resurrection, he already took care of your mess. Ready? Just repeat after me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins, that our heavenly Father raised him from the dead to give me eternal, new, and abundant life. I receive him right now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Here it is. Today, your mess just became God's miracle. That message is for you, your children, and your children's children. Receive that right now by the authority of heaven in the name of Jesus. 